I want to thank the governors of the United States of America who are standing with Texas. Half of the governors of the United States have joined with Texas in our cause to make sure states can do everything possible to secure our border. Half of the governors that have joined the cause to support Texas are joining us at this event today. And we are here to send a loud and clear message that we are banding together to fight to ensure that we will be able to maintain our constitutional guarantee that states will be able to defend against any type of imminent danger or an invasion. That has been threatened by Joe Biden and his abject refusal to enforce the immigration laws of the United States of America. The laws of the United States passed by Congress, they require the president to deny illegal entry. To the contrary of denying illegal entry, he is aided and abetted that illegal entry. If somebody makes it across the border illegally, the president has the responsibility imposed by Congress to detain any illegal immigrant who has come here. As opposed to detaining any illegal immigrant, Biden instead has let them all loose across the entire country with no ability to accurately determine their whereabouts or what they may be doing. Because of this, we've seen the catastrophic consequences of Joe Biden's open border policies. Over the tenure of Joe Biden, we've had three Houstons cross the border illegally. All time records. And we see the dangers every single day. Just to recount a few that happened just this past year. The Texas Department of Public Safety, they arrested an MS-13 gang member who was on the terrorist watch list. Know this, there are people on the terrorist watch list that are apprehended all the time coming across the border. These are people who pay extra money not to be caught. The United States of America and the president do not know how many people have crossed the border illegally who are on the terrorist watch list and have never been seen. They do not know the imminent dangers that we may be facing. Another example is, once again, the Texas Department of Public Safety. They arrested somebody who came across the border illegally who had served in the army and the military for Iran. Why is this person here? Why were they trying to sneak in illegally? What were they going to try to do? We were fortunate to be able to apprehend it, but who knows what would have happened had we not apprehended it. And then you see the deadly loss of life. We saw it just outside of the Houston area last year, where we saw an illegal immigrant who had come across the border illegally four times, murder five people outside of Houston, Texas. These are crimes that don't happen now and then. These are crimes that happen all the time. Part of it is because, as uh, set forth by the Texas Department of Public Safety, we have people who are coming across our border who were released from prison in other countries. There was a, a person who was apprehended who was uh, wanted for rape charges, another who was wanted for murder charges. There's extraordinary danger, imminent danger, crossing our border all the time. And of course, Americans are not going to soon forget what they saw happen in New York City, where we saw illegal immigrants brutalize and beat up police officers in New York City, only to be immediately released on bail back out on the streets, causing no one knows what level of mayhem. Because of the extraordinary dangers that the state of Texas is sustaining, as well as states across the country, and uh, because Joe Biden has completely abdicated and abandoned his responsibility to enforce the laws of the United States. I have used a clause in the Constitution that empowers states to defend themselves. It's Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3 of the United States Constitution, where a state can defend itself and its citizens to protect their safety from the imminent danger that we are facing and from an invasion 
of millions of people coming from across the globe into our country who are unaccounted for whatsoever. And I applaud and thank the, the members of the governors who are with us here today. Way that from the very beginning of Texas history has always been here for the great state of Texas. Thank you, Governor. And Tennessee will continue. We are the volunteer state. We have had hundreds of troops on the border. We are prepared even today to send additional troops working with the Texas Department of Military to do just that. And I'm here today as, as the chairman of the Republican Governor Association, number one, to say thank you to Governor Abbott, who has done everything within his power to provide an improvement to the situation at the border, to provide safety and security for Texans, for Americans, and the federal government has failed Texans and Americans in providing that security and that safety. And that's why these governors are here together today to do our job, which is the job that the federal government has failed to do, and that is to protect this country. Each one of us understand the devastating effects that the border policy has had on every one of our states individually. And we're here together to collaboratively work to support Texas and to provide for the safety and security of people all across the country. This experiment in an open border policy has catastrophically failed America. And this country is in desperate need of leadership as it relates to this issue. Governor Abbott has had unwavering and shown unwavering leadership, and we stand in support of that leadership, each of us today. Governor Kemp from Georgia has also been a leader in this issue, providing not only troops, but resources. Governor Kemp, would you like to say a few things? Well, thank you, Governor Lee. You know, and many governors that are not, because every state in our country now is a border state because of what we're happening. When you think about the amount of fentanyl, human trafficking that's coming, they're coming to every state in the country and every governor's having to deal with it. And we're standing with Governor Abbott today because if our border is not secure, our country is not secure. And Joe Biden's policies are making our country less safe. And that's what we're here documenting today and standing with Governor Abbott that's trying to do something about that. We just had a great briefing. There's been 169 people in 2023 that were on the GBI terrorist watch list, apprehended. How many of those are in our country that we didn't, or Governor Abbott's people didn't apprehend? 458 million lethal doses of fentanyl that have been detained at this border. Think about the doses that were not. Every governor's dealing with that. $51 million in cash, 56,000 pounds of methamphetamine that every state in the country is having to deal with. This is ruining lives in our states, it's ruining our communities, and it's taking a toll on our families. And it is time that something was done about this. And that is why we are standing here as governors, making sure that that gets done. Every state in the country depending on Joe Biden acting. And if he does not, then we will continue to do so, and we stand with Governor Abbott and what he is doing. It's now my honor to introduce you to Arkansas's Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Thank you. I'm glad the wind picked up just as I stepped up here. I would have gladly borrowed a hat, but they all have the wrong states on them. So, uh, thank you all for coming out today. Uh, obviously, I think by the strong showing and the sheer number of governors that are stepping up across the country, it's very clear that this is not just a fight that Texas is having. This is a fight that all of us have to engage in. But very simply, Joe Biden has completely failed at one of his most basic and important duties as the president. He has failed to protect our borders and protect our people. Not only has he failed in his job, but he's been dishonest about it. He's trying to pass off the idea that somehow he has no ability to do anything to fix it. And Congress has to step up.
when every single person knows he can make changes and steps right now today to help secure our border and protect our country. Yet he simply refuses to do so. And because of his failures, Governor Abbott is having to step up. Governors from across the country are having to step up and do the job of the federal government because they simply won't. I'm proud of the fact that we have strong leaders like those of us that are standing next to and behind me. Because of them, our country will be safer, our people will be better protected. And we don't stand with them in football, but I can tell you that Arkansas is most definitely standing in the state of Texas when it comes to protecting our border. There is no absolutely vital to the long-term safety and security of our country. I'm proud of Governor Abbott's leadership and I'm proud that I get to stand with each of these incredible people as we pledge to support Texas in whatever we can do to help. Arkansas sent National Guard troops here last year and I can commit today that we'll continue to do that over the course of this year as much as we can and as much as needed until the federal government and Joe Biden step up and do their jobs. We're here and we're thankful for the leadership of them. With that, I'm going to turn it over to my good friend, Governor of Montana, Greg Campbell. Thank you, Governor. With Texas in this fight, the governors here have repeatedly called on the Biden administration to step up and do their job. Most recently, in a joint letter, we asked for the names and identities of people that have crossed illegally into this country. That request was met with silence. It came on top of a letter that shared a 10-point plan to secure the border. That was three years ago. We're still waiting for a response from the White House. Montana has had our soldiers here on the southern border for most of last year. And Governor Abbott, we're committed to stand with you and continue to provide resources so that we can protect the citizens of the United States and our country. This is impacting all of our states. In the Northern Rockies, where I call home, we've seen a 78% increase in fentanyl just in the last year, and we've lost lives, and it's uh, broken families apart. We need to secure the border. Our states are being invaded by the people crossing illegally. Our constitution gives the states the right to self-defense. That's what Governor Abbott's doing, and that's why we're here standing with him today. Biden is doing the exact opposite. He's working against the interests of, of this country, and we are here today to call on him, the federal administration, to do their job. Thank you for calling attention to this issue. Once again, I want to thank all the governors who joined with us today and all the governors across the entire United States of America who are standing with the right of states to assert self-defense. In furtherance of that self-defense, Texas is the only state in the history of the United States of America to build our own border wall. Texas has deployed our National Guard who bravely stand guard night and day, and they erect these razor wire barriers. The National Guard has erected more than 100 miles of razor wire barriers that serves effectively to deny illegal entry. And they have ensured that uh, this entire park that we are in right now will not be an area that can be used to pass anymore. This area we are in right now was at one time not too long ago, an area where there would be 3,000, 4,000, sometimes 5,000 people crossing illegally. Now that we've taken control of this area, for the past three days, there's an average of only three people crossing illegally in this area. The point very simply is this. It shows that the state of Texas can do what the federal government is charged to do and has the tools and equipment to do. The president is obligated by laws passed by Congress to actually secure the border and deny illegal entry. Texas has shown that we can reduce it to three people crossing across the border. Joe Biden, it is your turn now, your obligation, your duty to follow the law Congress passed and secure the border just as Texas has.
with that, we'll take a few questions. Governor, the only reason you don't see immigrants right now here, this is Antonio from Univision. Don't you think it's because Mexico stopped everybody from entering Coahuila right now, and you don't see even nobody there right now? Don't you think it's, it's let's maybe be, a let's, combination? Let's, let's it's a clear. combination. And I don't let's be clear about something. Don't, don't fool anybody. We know that the people who control the migration across the border are the cartels. The cartels who extort money, who rape the people that they victimized before they come across here. The cartels are losing money trying to come into the state of Texas now. The cartels have rerouted their routes to cross the border because Texas is the only state that's putting up any resistance, despite the fact that Texas represents more than 60% of the land miles of the border. The overwhelming majority now of people crossing the border are crossing in Arizona and California, two states that are putting up no resistance to illegal immigration. If the United States under President Biden did in Texas, in New Mexico, in California, in Arizona, what we're doing here, you would eliminate illegal immigration overnight. Don't say, don't say the border's open. access to border control to this area and to would you restate the first part of your question again? Your rationale for denying access to border patrol agents to this area of Shelby Park and 2.5 miles of river. To, to be clear, uh, from the very beginning and to this moment, they have access to the boat ramp and they have access to uh, the razor wire area if anybody's life is in danger. On top of that, however, the area where we are is an area where the federal government was using to further criminal activity. They were involved in violating the federal laws of the United States of America on this land. We will not allow this land to be used for illegal purposes. Governor, civilians as invaders. with NBC News. The Senate is poised to vote on an immigration bill this week. Do you think that that could help you? So I, I have no idea how to answer your question because I have no idea what's going to be in that Senate bill. And, and I have no idea if the, the, the House would agree with it. So uh, your question actually uh, is filled with unknowns. All I know is this, uh, and that is the open border policies that Joe Biden has allowed could no longer be tolerated. He has the ability, as we speak this very moment, to take action to shut down the border and stop illegal immigration. Joe Biden does not need more legislative authority. He just needs a backbone to step up and do his job and secure the border. Governor, 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 you're standing in front of a lot of armed men and women. You're here with other governors from many states. There's military vehicles. You talked about invasion. What do you say to people, we've heard this from Republicans and Democrats, who are concerned that there's a civil war or some preclude to some kind of armed conflict between Americans. What would you say to people like that? It's a false narrative. That's just really nothing more than a narrative. What we are seeking to do and what we are actually doing, we're actually enforcing the laws of the United States of America. What Americans want, whether it be the border or whether it be uh, carjackings in Washington, D.C., or police officers being beat up in New York City, what Americans want, they want law and order. And they want the laws of our country enforced. All we're doing is enforcing the laws of the United States of America. Governor, how long will be under state control. It, it, it's, it's going to stay under control uh, it, as long as it takes to, to maintain security and to eliminate costs. I'll be honest with you, we can relinquish control of it tomorrow if Joe Biden were to step up and do exactly what we're doing here and stop people from crossing the border illegally. We have seen a president and his predecessor do exactly that. Joe Biden has every tool in his toolbox to make sure that he reduces illegal immigration as much as Texas was able to reduce it right here. In the meantime, let me add this. As we speak right now, the Texas National Guard, uh, they're undertaking operations to expand this effort. We're not going to contain ourselves just to this part. Uh, we are expanding to further areas to make sure that we will expand our level of deterrence and denial of illegal entry into the United States. for you and for all the other governors here. You guys have, a lot of people have said that this is, things like this in an election year are just a political stunt by Republicans. What do you guys all say to that? Say, say that to the average American. The average American is angry. The number one issue in the United States of America is the broken border and the illegal immigration that Joe Biden has created. We don't have time to wait till November. We got lives on the line every single day. 
say that to the parents who have lost a child to deadly fentanyl that's growing in number across the country. There are lives at risk every single day. It's like every police officer in every city in our great state that understands that they have a daily duty to make sure that their communities are safe, regardless of when elections take place. We as governors have that responsibility to make sure that our states and our country are going to be safe from the illegal immigration crossing. I would just remind you too that many of the governors here were here. When was that? Right, a year ago. Well, way before the campaign started on the same issue, writing letters to Joe Biden about how to fix the border, executive action that he could take. So this is not a campaign tactic. This is something that this group and the Republican governors have been concerned with for many, many months and years. Can you tell me how many troops are here? Does not stop illegal immigration. Is there? They're walking around in fear, and they feel that the federal government has failed them. What about you governors? Are you going to be able to step up to protect their sovereignty and give them the right to be free citizens here in their own state? And you're talking about the, the local residents in this area? Yes. So for, first of all, uh, I think the local residents around here are, are angry and rightfully so uh, because their area, their, their neighborhoods, their golf courses, uh, their shopping areas all have been invaded. But I cannot tell you the number uh, of ranchers and homeowners uh, who live, whether it be here or in Del Rio or up and down this entire area, who, who cry and complain about uh, their ranches being ripped apart, their homes being invaded, uh, fearful about the children playing in the streets, uh, all, all the uh, uh, car chases uh, that are taking place in neighborhoods. This has turned into a danger zone for one reason. It was not that way four years ago. Four years ago, this was an area of law and order a safe area for people to golf and play and enjoy it. And that's because we had a president who was enforcing the immigration laws of the United States. Their property, their land, their safety, and their enjoyment of it can all be restored if we have a president who enforces the laws of the United States, as opposed to being hostile to that and being hostile to a state simply trying to enforce the laws of the United States. Declaration of Independence, the only way, or what are you going to do? So, uh, we will continue to expand our efforts. Our declaration is a declaration of our rights under the United States Constitution, Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3, that guarantees the right of every state that's either invaded or in imminent danger, which we are in imminent danger, to be able to exercise self-defense. Texas will continue to exercise that self-defense and expand the area where we are using that self-defense to make sure we are able to better protect our communities. All right, two more. Why brand mothers and children civilians crossing between ports of entry illegally as invaders? So I can't understand the details of your question. I'm going to answer the best I can. The fact of the matter is, if you look behind you, uh, there are people crossing right now. They're crossing that bridge. A couple of things about that. One is that uh, whether it be here, El Paso, Brownsville, or parts in between, there are thousands of people cross back and forth every single day for, for work purposes, for visiting purposes, for tourism purposes, whatever the case may be. That's perfectly fine. What is completely illegal is for people to enter between a port of entry. Think about this astonishing fact. Under Joe Biden, a record number of people have died in this river right behind us. And they die in that river because they try crossing in that river. Why in the world don't they just go up a few steps and cross across that bridge, which is an official port of entry? Texas has 28 ports of entry. Get this fact. No one has ever drowned crossing a bridge. If Joe Biden cared about the safety of these migrants that he seems to have empathy for, he would have them cross a bridge as opposed to crossing a river and paying the money that goes to the cartels to cross the river. Last question. Last question. Last question. Last question. What you say in the United States? Historically, what? has encouraged vigilante activity. They run around in camo and they cause plays police. What's your response to that? Will you denounce border vigilantism? Law and order needs to be left to states, to law enforcement, to authorized entities. Uh, and we don't want anybody taking any type of vigilante action. Uh, we believe in public safety, and that means the safety of, of everybody, the lives of everybody 
people are, are, are important, and we don't want anybody to be harmed in any way. All that we want is to enforce the immigration laws for the United States. Secure our border. Secure our border. Comrades. Comrades. Build that wall! 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 Build that w